This is Dish Falk Field in Austin, Texas, home of the Texas Longhorns. And tonight, the Longhorns and Aggies renew one of the greatest rivalries in college sports. This one on the diamond for the 375th time with a winner advancing to an NCAA regional final. Underway in the first inning with Aggie ace Mitchell Kilkenny on the mound. He's allowed an infield single and he's hit a batter. Two on for the All-American Cody Clemens. Son of the Rocket who's in attendance tonight. Clemens a Big 12 player of the year with an RBI opportunity early for the Longhorns. David Hamilton reached on an infield single. Duke Ellis took a fastball in the shins. There's the Rocket, seven-time Cy Young Award winner. And there's an early visit to the mound for Rob Childress. Welcome, everybody. Tom Hart alongside Kyle Peterson. These two rivals can't even agree on when this rivalry started. Texas says it was 1903. A&M says it was 1904. This is going to be a fun one. A lot of emotions in the stands and on the field. Yeah, we've already seen it. I mean, emotions from Mitchell Kilkenny, the starter for Texas A&M, who generally does not struggle with command. Went 3-2 to start this ball game. David Hamilton with an infield single up the middle. And then the first pitch, when he knows Duke Ellis' button, he hits him in the back shin. Watch fastball location right now for Mitchell Kilkenny because it feels like the emotions are getting the best of him. Well timed right there by Rob Childers to go out and just try to slow everything down in his mind. Cody Clemens is having a magnificent season. He won the Big 12 regular season with a walk off against TCU. But these are the games where you're remembered forever. 2 0. Oh. Kilkenny behind in the count. Change up right there, and I think the intent was to try to slow him down a little bit more. Now you're staring at a 2 0 count, facing the best power hitting second baseman in the country. Clemens. Top 10 in the Big 12 in batting average in RBI. More home runs than anyone else in the Big 12 Conference this season. The 2 0 from Kilkenny. Tim Vesey is the home plate umpire. And the count goes to 2 and 1. Quick look back to Tim Vesey right there as the Rocket looks on. It looked like Cody looked at him and just asked, Is that as far as this one goes? Just to see exactly where the outer edge of the strike zone is tonight. And to add to it for Kilkenny, the runner at second base, David Hamilton, leads the Big 12 in stolen bases. Last night against Texas Southern, he became the first Longhorn in seven years to steal home in a game. Driven deep to right field. The Longhorns strike first. This is the game and this is the series where you cement your legacy if you're a Longhorn or an Aggie. And when you can take a curtain call in the first, things are going pretty well. It's been an emotional season for the Longhorns. Their longtime coach, Augie Garrido. Passed away on March 15th after leaving his position a couple of years ago. In their first home series after Augie's passing, they won an emotional game against Kansas. Clemens has played hero all season long for Texas. Zach Zubia, double digit home runs. He's connected for 10 of them. Yeah. 
Driven deep to left field. Logan Foster has room. Moments ago, Cody Clemens brought the fans in Burn Orange to their feet. How about this? Just sitting on that right there. 2 0 fastball. Cody Clemens knows he's going to get one. David Hamilton with a fake steal, and that might have caught the eye of Mitchell Kilkenny before he threw the pitch. This caught the eye of the Texas A&M dugout. Cody Clements coming around just saying hello, and he made it 3 nothing really quick. Home run at number 20 in the first. As if this place wasn't electric enough, that got them all on their feet. It's the eyes of Texas on the third base dugout after the bomb from Clemens. Mason Hibbler at the plate. First taste of this rivalry for Mason Hibbler came this year. He's a transfer from Odessa Junior College. And Foster has his second out. These games have been close. Each of the last three have been decided by just one run, but it's the first meeting in the postseason since 2014. That was the only meeting in the postseason for these two. Indiana stayed alive earlier today. They'll draw the loser regional final tomorrow night for the winner of this one. Third baseman Ryan Reynolds. What's different for Mitchell Kilkenny tonight? Well, it's fastball location early. I mean, you get the 2 0 count, you get a pump one into Cody Clemens, who's the one guy in this Texas lineup that you circle as the one you don't want to beat you. They didn't have a choice there. A strikeout and a tag to finish it. This place is buzzing early, thanks to the son of a legend and the All American, Cody Clemens. Texas, the visitors tonight. That works just fine for Cody Clements. First two reach, he erases it with that swing, takes a little peek at the dugout. This one might be fun. Picture worth a thousand words and more. Roger and Debbie Clemens. Mom got a snapshot of Cody's 20th home run of the season, which gave the Longhorns an early advantage over Texas A&M. Aggies had to rally in the SEC tournament to even make it to the NCAA tournament, but they came into this weekend with the best RPI of any team in this regional. Here's a look at the batting order put together by Rob Childress. An average offensive season for a Texas A&M team that is known to hunt strikes and be aggressive at the plate. They're young, too. Zach Alocha, freshman, leads off. Michael Helm, the junior college transfer. Then they go sophomore, 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 freshman in this Aggies lineup. Look out for Will Frizzell. The left-hander has real power. Just about hit a ball out opposite field yesterday for Texas A&M. They'll face a big right-hander today. Nolan Kingham has real stuff. It's, it's a power sinker. We'll get into the low 90s, and that's really what he lives off of. I think the one thing to watch today, though, is he was down for a few days this week. Kingham had a virus a few players on this Texas team did one question is how far can he go where are the legs as he gets out there it was hundred degrees just a few minutes ago it'll be in the mid 90s for the entirety of this ball game if there's one blip on this Texas ball club it's been consistency in this role their starters have not been great the entire season King and Kingham has the ability to do so 100 degrees right now feels like 106 wind blowing out to left freshman Zach Deloach in the leadoff spot to Hamilton sure handed shortstop one down it's one thing to watch with Kingham if you see ground balls and a lot of them early that'll tell you right away how good the sinker is Zach Deloach not wasting any time looking first pitch fastball got it but the movement of that got it off the barrel and drove it right in the ground that'll bring up Michael Hellman he's the SEC's batting average leader with a 367 mark 
third in the conference in on base percentage. Hellman is one of a handful of Aggies from Lincoln, Nebraska. Rob Childress, longtime assistant at Nebraska before he came to AM. His assistants played there. And they have a lot of connections back in the Cornhusker State. Transferred in from Hutchinson Junior College, where he was the JUCO National Player of the Year and won a gold glove. Coming into the season, all the talk was about Braden Shoemake, and rightfully so. He was the All SEC second baseman as a freshman. Shoemake moves to short this year, goes All SEC at that position. This guy's been their most consistent player the entire year. Fouls another one off. Will Bolt, nice barehanded play in the coach's box. He's trying to find the right one to throw that to. Plenty of maroon in the stands yep. here at Dish Falk. Breaking ball waved at, two down. Good early signs from Nolan Kingham. The two-seamer looks like a bowling ball when it gets to home plate. Was born in on the hands of Michael Hellman. He fouled two sinkers off. Nolan Kingham comes back with a slider. Hellman swings right over the top. Two down for Braden Shoemake, sophomore from Wiley, Texas, out of Wiley East High School. His dad, Shane, a college coach. He's the head coach at UT Dallas. Has missed just one game in his Aggies career. That was earlier this season against Arkansas. A bouncer to Clemens. It's a 1-2-3 frame worked by Nolan Kingham. Needed just eight pitches for three outs. Three-nothing horns through one. NCAA Baseball Regionals is presented by the Capital One Venture Car. Earn unlimited double miles on every purchase every day. What's in your wallet? And in part by Dove Men Plus Care. Hair makes a man stronger. And Pizza Hut. No one out pizzas the hut. There have been some heroes in this series, but very few have occurred in the postseason. This is only the second postseason meeting between Texas and Texas A&M. Longhorns say this is the 375th meeting. The Aggies say it's the 370th. Longhorns say this series started in 1903. The Aggies say no, that's not quite correct. We say 1904. Doesn't that feel about right, though? No doubt. Here's DJ Petrinsky. What we do know is when they met in the regional at Reckling Park in Houston, Rice's home, in 2014, it was an emotional three games. It went the distance. Flagged down by Hellman. One down. Let's get you to the studio as we say hello to Adnan Burke for the first time. Hello, Tom Harton. Up to Florida State and Mississippi State. Elijah McNamee. A three-run home run. One, two, two outs in the bottom of the ninth. Fifth walk-off homer of the year for the Bulldogs. The most in the SEC in Bedlam and Sues. As you can see, they move on to play Sunday at noon Eastern. Tom, back to you and Kyle. Adnan, thanks. Here's Tate Shaw at the plate. And the lasting effect from that game is now the nation's all-time wins leader, Mike Martin, known throughout baseball circles simply by his number 11, is done for the year. Florida State goes two and barbecue at their own region. As a national seed. Beat yesterday by Sanford, comes back, and it looks like they've got Mississippi State handled. Two on, two out, 0-2 oh, count. Elijah McNamee goes deep. Jake Mangum lost his mind. <laughs> Get the feeling that that Mississippi State team with an interim coach this year, Gary Henderson, could be on a Cinderella type run. You get the feeling they've been playing kind of in the we have nothing to lose category for about three and a half months, and it clearly hasn't stopped yet. Tate Shaw at the plate for Texas, bases empty and one down. Shaw, fourth year junior out of Austin's Westlake High School.
Kilkenny looks like he's found his stride. He's now retired five in a row. Settle down after that home run, and sometimes it has a way of doing it. Misses a spot here, but gets away with it. He's trying to throw a cutter in on the hands of Tate Shaw. That one kind of backed up on him, and it almost acted like a changeup. Wasn't trying to throw it there, but got away with it. Said pitch ended up moving a little bit away from Shaw. The velocity difference was about 10 miles an hour off the fastball. This is Jake McKenzie in the nine hole. McKenzie is senior from Dallas, graduated this year with a 395 GPA, a petroleum engineering major. And he made Texas Longhorn history back on April 17th. He played all nine positions in one game, got the final two outs on the mound. Give you perspective on how rare that is in Major League history, that's only been accomplished five times. And to make it even more impressive, that was only a seven inning game. Chopped up the middle, that'll get through. Two out single for McKenzie. <laughs> Philip Miller, the first base coach, will handle the gloves, and we'll see if Texas won't try to get something going with David Hamilton. Hamilton dropped down a squeeze last night ended be, ended up beating it out for an RBI bunch single swings at the first Logan Foster in the sunlight and that'll close the Longhorn half of the second they're the visitors here in their home field tonight Aggies got some work to do down three bottom of two. Adnan and Burke back in our college baseball studios. UNC Wilmington and Ohio State. Bottom of the 13th, Keck Brown with the walk-off single, the eighth walk-off win of the year for UNC Wilmington and jubilation for all those there. 13 innings it takes as you see they move on Sunday, noon Eastern, as the bracket continues in double elimination of the Greenville region. Tom and Kyle. Adnan, thanks. More than a capacity crowd here at Dish Falk Field in Austin. Overhanging the parking garage and the left field line. They're on the hill behind left. And um, you go back to that Ohio State reaction to the end of that yeah. game. I think that kind of epitomizes what college baseball is all about a catcher consoling his pitcher, knowing it was over. Yeah, I mean, it's, I remember the moment we're on the field of Rosenblatt when you know that your college career is done or it's. In some cases, just that the season's over, but it's. Uh, I mean, one of the greatest things about this game is the the two sets of emotions that it brings you in big moments. One's hooked foul. Our folks behind the fence in left field, occupying their spot behind the Augie banner. Ball and two strikes to Chris Andritzis. Andritzis had a big moment in the SEC tournament against Georgia. Two homers in one game, two of his seven on the season. Committed to Oklahoma as an eighth grader, went there. He was their Friday night starter and a two way player. Into center. Tate Shaw has it one down. For more coverage of the Division I Baseball Regionals and interactive brackets, go to NCAA.com. Regional weekend ongoing now. Next week, the Supers and then Omaha. AM was there last year. They're on the road for the Regionals. They've won 10 consecutive regional games coming into tonight. And then they're home for the Supers against 4 C Davidson. Swept the surprising Wildcats and moved on to the College World Series. Here's Logan Foster, 0 and 1. To Foster's disbelief, a strike just about belt high. It's been that way on both sides. Tim Vesey with a little bit of a wide strike zone today. 
Foster, another Lincoln product at a Lincoln Southwest. Chases one out of the strike zone. Three to dispatch him. Second K for Nolan Kingham. The two sliders that Kingham has thrown in two strike counts. So the one that struck Hellman out, the one that struck Foster out of the two best slider he's thrown the entire day. You can tell on this one he really commits to it. Watch where it starts and where it ends up. Foster reads fastball. And a great look at it right here. It starts right about at his eyes. Ends up off the plate, down and out of the zone. That one's elite when he gets through it like that. When he tries to guide it is where it just rolls out of his hand. Fouled off by the freshman Will Frizzell. Now this guy's got raw power. Six homers on the season. At a rock wall, Texas. To the left side, Hamilton backhand plant throw a skip got him David Hamilton sensational play in the hole he is one of the best shortstop in all of college baseball we talk about the speed but the reality is the glove of David Hamilton is elite has the ability to go backhand watch him stick his right foot in the turf right away right foot in the turf strong throw across you know the one hop has plenty of time for Jake McKenzie to react two perfect innings to start for Nolan Kegum There's nothing better than Omaha, home of the College World Series, and it is coming soon. Six national championships for the Longhorns. The Aggies back in Omaha last year. The surprising run through the postseason. Here's the two-hole hitter, Duke Ellis, hit by a pitch his first time up. He took one in the shin. Tim Vesey says he committed. Nothing and one. And just missed inside with 92. Ellis, first team, all Big 12 center fielder. 20th round pick of the Mariners in 2017. Dad Robert played a long time in the big leagues, was part of the Diamondbacks 2001 World Series champion team. Dad's former teammate. What that? Big bat on deck. Cody Clemens. And there's a runner on in front of him. Cody Clemens with 20 home runs on the season tied for second most in Texas history. He's just the third player in Longhorn history to hit 20 joining Kyle Russell and Jeff Onaveros. 66 ribbies are the most since Brandon Belt in 2008. Three run Jack for Cody in the first. And he sees a first pitch fastball. When this bracket was announced, Cody got some texts from his buddies with the Aggies saying, oh, this one might be fun. Lane Shane Vogel is one of them that reached out to Cody. It was a little bit more than fun. It looked like it was personal when Clemens rounded third after his home run in the first inning. I like that. You know, his brother Casey did the same thing. To yeah. a and a couple years ago. Because it's, I mean, it's true emotion. You feel that when you're in games like this. First inning, three run home run. Don't think he's saying gig him. Didn't say a word. Didn't have to. Goes down swinging at a fastball upstairs. Third K for Mitchell Kilkenny. This is big for Mitchell Kilkenny in the balance of this ball game, and, and really it's because of how aggressive he was. So first pitch fast, first pitch fastball, then comes right back with it. Then they're trying to get Clemens to chase, and I like that they went right back to it. 
It's not easy to lead to lay off of a high fastball when you're as dialed up as Cody Clemens is right now. Four pitches in the at bat. All four were fastballs. And that time it looked like Mitchell Kilkenny had intent behind every one of them. It didn't look that way the first time he faced Clemens. Zach Zubia ground ball left side. Yancha diving smothering stop but he throws it high. Everybody's safe with one out here in the third. Yancha's got to let this ball go. If you have to lay out on a slow roller at third base like that you know your shortstop's right behind. Watch where Shoemake is. So Yancha goes all the way across. Shoemake's all of his momentum is coming in towards that. The throw's going to have more on it. Yancha has to lay out kind of tackles it to start. And then ultimately goes from his knees and the ball sails on it. There was an old rule that said if you're a third baseman, get everything you can get to. It's different if your route goes directly towards second base and you have to dive. That's a lot easier play for Shoemake to make. Yancha was the opening day shortstop for the Aggies two years ago as a freshman. Been cemented at third since that year. To a board for Mason Hibbler. Hibbler was unrecruited out of Cypress Ranch High School in Cypress, Texas. Ended up at Odessa Junior College where he grew into his body and grew into a home run hitter. Six feet 190 now. Put on about 35 pounds since his junior year of high school. Going into his last weekend at Odessa Junior College freshman year. They were out of any sort of postseason berth. They're playing at the string, and his coach gave him some advice. It's still with him. He said, Hey, you're big enough now. Just try to hit it over the fence. He had four home runs that weekend. He found his power. That's great coaching. Just hit it over the fence. Sometimes the simple stuff is the best stuff. Swing hard. <laughs> they work. Swing hard in case you hit it. Keep an eye on Ellis at second. Subia behind him at first. Swing and a miss for Hibbler. Fourth strikeout for Kilkenny. Let's go back to Adnan for a studio update. All right, Tom, thank you. An update on New Mexico State and Penn State. This is Pete Schuler in the bottom of the eighth, a two run home run. The first win for Kent State since they beat Florida in the 2012 College World Series. Two won the final. Tom, you and Kyle. All right, Adnan, thanks. In other news, the winner of this regional will meet up with the winner from the Oxford, Mississippi regional. They got rained out yesterday. Ole Miss just tied it up early on with SLU, St. Louis University. Fly ball to left off the bat of Ryan Reynolds. Logan Foster has been earning his scholarship money so far tonight. A run shot ahead, a couple left, middle of the third. Longhorns lead. Just Monday night at 7 o'clock, and there'll be plenty of college players taken early. Keith Law says four of the top 10 picks will be college players that are participating in the NCAA postseason, including the presumptive number one overall pick, Casey Mize, who is throwing tonight for Auburn as they match up with Army. All of the pitchers you see listed there are throwing or have thrown today. It's a pretty good day if you like the top talent in the entire country. Casey Mize, all signs point to him being the first overall pick. Brady Singer goes for Florida tonight. Good to see Nick Madrigal back and healthy for Oregon State. Beavers and LSU later tonight. Mize just took the mound in Raleigh in a downpour as Auburn matches up with Army. Army upset NC State. They set up that matchup. Here's Alante Wingate, Jr. from Beaumont, Texas. Hitting in the seven hole. A lot more playing time for Wingate late in the season. In both right field and at third base. 
originally started his college career at the University of Houston. Kingham just misses away. It's off the plate, but a good miss. It's exactly where he was trying to go with that. And, and where Kingham can struggle sometimes is the fastball glove side. So the fastball on the outside part of the plate to the right hander. That is not as natural as the fastball on the inside part of the right hander is given his mechanics. Breaking ball just missed inside. He misses two in a row after pumping eight straight strikes before that. Watch the glove. Watch where it starts and where it ends up. You can see the move of Petrinsky. He wanted that slider on the outside part of the plate. It backed up a little bit. Nolan Kingham has not allowed a hit yet. He has not allowed a base runner. This is the first three ball count for Kingham tonight. And Alante Wingate will be the first Aggie base runner. ESPN Networks bring you every game on the road to Omaha, starting with regional coverage on ESPN2, ESPNU, SEC Network, and ESPN3. Whip around coverage also available through ESPN3 and the Bases Loaded channel. All coverage, as always, is available on the ESPN app. We've got it on in the booth right now, and we're watching an absolute downpour in Raleigh, North Carolina, with the presumptive number one overall pick of the Detroit Tigers trying to pitch through the rain. Auburn and Army are scoreless in the bottom of one. I don't, I don't like that at all. I mean, you got to know that it's going to rain. It, 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 that stuff just doesn't pop up when it's raining that hard. And, and clearly, if you're Auburn, you know where Casey Mize from a draft standpoint stands and if you go out and get him hot and he throws it rains and you got to sit for an hour and a half two hours it is not easy to look yourself in the mirror running back out there and you can bet the Detroit Tigers are watching closely as well or the San Francisco Giants who have the number two overall pick there was some concern in Tallahassee today Drew Parrish threw about 135 pitches after sitting out through a lengthy rain delay they brought him back out sat over two hours Said over two hours of throwing over 100 pitches came out, ended up throwing 135, came off a walk up home run. I love Mike Martin. I think he's an incredible man and, and one of the best coaches our game's ever seen, but I have no idea how they could make that decision. Swing and a miss for Bedford, one and two. Mac Brown. National champion football coach watching this one. Chris Del Conte, the athletic director here at the University of Texas, next to him. You see Mac before this one, popped in and say hello. A unique perspective on this rivalry. We'll get a little bit deeper into that as the game continues. Including Justin Tucker's game winning field goal in 2011 with no time on the clock. One two pitch. Strike three swinging for Cole Bedford. Let's get back to Adnan. All right, Tom, this time an update in Coastal Carolina and Washington. 7 6, Washington leading it in the bottom of the six. 0 2 count. It's Joe Waynehouse. The two run shot, his 16th home run of the season, and Washington still in the lead 9 6, top of the seven. Tom? Waynehouse looks like he could play offensive line for Mac. Yes. Here's another number 44. This is George Yancha. AM's third baseman. Flinched at one on the outside corner. Keith Jones says he didn't go. Aggie's still looking for their first hit. Longhorns won the Big 12 regular season with an emotional series against TCU, but they didn't fare so well at the Big 12 tournament in Oklahoma City. Arguably, the hay was already in the barn, and they returned early from OKC. Open this regional with a win last night against Texas Southern in dominating fashion. It was a 10-0 final. Chase Sugar. 
That is 10th win of the season. The former closer. Might not be done for the weekend. A chance we could see him tomorrow out of the pen, maybe Monday. 69 pitches yesterday for Sugar to six innings. Texas pitching hasn't allowed a base runner to reach third all regional. Sharply hit. Hamilton has it. Lost it. And the shovel is late. Just the tenth there of the season for David Hamilton. Talk about how sure-handed Hamilton is, and he absolutely is, but there's a little bit of indecision here, and I think the indecision was whether or not he's going to flip this ball to Cody Clements covering second base or take it himself. Watch his eyes right at the last minute. Eyes go up, and he's looking to see exactly where Cody Clements is before the ball's in his glove. You're not going to see this very much from Hamilton. Error right there that turns the lineup over for Texas A&M. So here's Zach Deloach batting 500 this weekend. Swung at the first pitch he saw to start the game. Early swing here. Clemens gathers. Productive out. Advances both Wingate and Yancha, but it's the second out of the inning. Tell you what, when your leadoff hitter's seen two pitches and two at bats, and both are ground balls, neither one of them are hit all that hard, that, that's when the freshman may be a little bit jumpy tonight. Your role in that spot. Generally not to swing at the first pitch every time you go up there work the count get that pitch count up a little bit To loach two ground outs on two pitches Michael Hellman struck out his first time up Drops a bunch squeeze here comes Reynolds play at first is late and the Aggies get a run across aggressive here in the third I like this a lot This ballpark and this turf really lends itself to a play like this. Ryan Reynolds knows it well. He plays third base every day here at home. But for Michael Hellman, this is one to where it's the perfect bunt or it goes foul. And you're fine with either one. First pitch of the at bat. Watch where Reynolds starts just behind even. Has to charge barehand. No chance that you're going to get the base runner out. Wingate's going to score easily on this one. Hellman can run. Drives in the first run of the ballgame for Texas A&M on a ball that went about 50 feet. That's Bunton for a hit, and he did it on his own. Rob Childress, the Aggies head coach, has Texas A&M in the postseason for the 12th consecutive year, longest run in school history. Stems the inning for Braden Shoemaker. To short, Hamilton will flip this one. The error helps lead to a run. Aggies get one across, and when we return, we'll be joined by both a legend and a dad. Roger Clemens will talk about his time at Texas and his son's time tonight. Well, all the runs so far from Texas came from this lone swing. Cody Clemens in the first inning. Three run shot was his 20th home run of the season. Emotional for him for sure. Probably a little bit of emotion for mom and dad too. Cody? Yeah, Roger yeah. Clemens in the booth with us tonight. You're usually, you usually play it pretty cool watching these games. We don't see a whole lot of emotion, but there was some from you on that one. What was different? Yeah, I was just smiling because, you know, it's such a big moment. And uh, for him to run into one, it was, uh, it was pretty cool. So. And he's been getting on me and everybody else in, the, in town about being too focused on the game and this and that. But I, I kind of like watching not only our guys, but I watch 
you know the other guy to kind of pitch sequence and you know you can pick up stuff in, in uh, you know around college baseball tendencies. You were watching at Reckling Park a couple of years ago as well when your son was on that team 2014 that was another emotionally charged atmosphere when Texas and A&M met in the postseason how we know how these games are different for the fans is it different for a parent when it's a rivalry game I think as I was you know Kyle would know too if they pitched uh, I think I'd be more edgy I know some of my buddies that their their uh, their kid pitched here at Texas they were a little more nervous uh, with the boys hitting and playing a position and um, I'm you know I'm pretty good with it I, you know I kind of watch what they do and we visit after the game if it's something uh, important. What are those discussions like I mean if they call you after the game what, what are the questions well or is it is it who, who drives that one it's tough it's tough um, when you have two of them on the team and one of them went three for four and the other one's yeah, over yeah. four yeah and you're out at dinner and I feel like Dr. Phil <laughs> you know, I'm like yeah, yeah you're good great well, game. Yeah, gonna, both you know, ways. yeah I'm going back and forth with him so but uh, it's been a great deal of fun for me to have the boys here at the, at the university. How's Casey doing Casey's doing good in Dunedin he got pushed okay. up a level uh, and uh, you know like I said I think he's got to settle in and see the next level of pitching and how they're going to attack him and do things like that. I tell all of my Texas A&M friends uh oh here this we go. one's uncorked deep to left. DJ. DJ Petrinsky with his eighth home run of the season. And that stroke looks good right now. He's he's feeling it after last night. Uh, you call this replay. <laughs> I want to see what you see on. Well, this. it looked like a breaking ball. Yeah. yeah. Basically, a slider is supposed to be away. It stayed in the middle of the plate. We got nice little. Uh, I wouldn't say it's a jet stream, but the wind's blowing great. 100 degrees. That ball's way out of here. Do you like pitching in weather like this? I did. Yeah. I did. I absolutely did. I also like pitching at Fenway Park when we had this shadow a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. No kidding. And uh, so, so that helped. But DJ swing. I mean, that looked. Uh, you know, you can look at the one. Put it up to the one last night. It looked exactly the same. His second home run of the regional. He's driven in five. This is Tate Shaw now. I tell my Texas A&M buddies they are all jumping on me pretty hard today and. Um, but a couple of years ago when we were at AM, I you know we fed, you know, I, I probably had half of the infant, probably eight, six to seven guys on the team that I fed when they were babies. And yeah, yeah I mean they're at the training table at my house. So almost I almost <laughs> had to root for them. <laughs> almost. Well, not for a guy obviously that has sons that have come through this program, but you came through the program as well back in 1983 when you guys won a national championship. How has the game changed in your eyes since then the college game? Well right now they're using you see what this is right here. Let's take a look. Fifth strikeout for Kilkenny. This game's a long way from over. He's, this, this, boy's, this kid's got a good arm. Yeah and he settled in too after that home run. He's, he's been a little bit different. It's definitely on the plate. They're getting a little bit extra right now too. I uh. You know, the, the, the obviously here at Texas, we brought the fences in a little bit. And I say we, one of the things Coach Pierce did right away, brought the fences in a little bit. This ballpark plays big. I mean, we loved yeah. it when we were here. Myself, uh, Calvin Chiraldi, Mike Capel, all of us, when we were, had our little Omaha run. What do you remember about Omaha? Um, just the excitement and how supportive the fans were, even if you weren't, uh, if you weren't one of their teams. Yeah. Uh, there at Omaha and as teams got knocked out the crowd the 20,000 people stayed there and supported the, the event. I thought that was really cool and uh, you know it's, it's, it's Omaha to go back to back when we went in 82 uh, and Spike Owen got taken one one I think by Seattle somewhere in there. Uh, I thought we were done as a team because Spike was our catalyst. He was he was an awesome player especially a college player. And then we came back with some experience on the pitching staff which was big and uh, and we won it all so it was it was definitely a stepping stone to my professional career without a doubt. It was the fourth national championship in Texas history. Two more since then under Augie Garrido. Jake McKenzie at the plate. The payoff pitch to the left side. Shoemaker. Take you back to Rosenblatt, 1983. This is the 35th anniversary. Wow, you guys dig deep. Graphics yeah, changed a little bit since since then too. There you go. 
There's the old backup slider. <laughs> it works. It's amazing. <laughs> they never hit that one. Kurt Keelings with came home on a Jose Talentino bunch single. You guys go on for the four to three win. Good bunch of guys, man. How are the emotions different yeah. as a as a college player versus what you did in the big leagues? I don't know. I think I think this place helped me learn how to win. You know, I played. With, I mean, I, t I tell my two boys, I tell Casey and Cody that I got to play for the winningest coach in college baseball history, and then they got to play for, of course, Augie. So. Yeah, that's something else. I didn't think about that too. You said it, but that's that's those are things that you're never going to forget. Yeah, and they were they were great baseball men, but they were better teachers of the game and things after the game for sure. What did you learn from Augie? Or what are the memories of Augie that stand out? I just remember the first time I met Augie, he made me feel like I was part of the um, part of the team, part of the staff right away. And um, I mean, he said, "Get over and sit behind me." They were having some fall ball workouts, and he had the uh, screen behind home plate. And he said, "Get over here. I want to." Ask you a couple questions about a couple of these arms that are going to come in, so I want you to watch. So he made me feel extremely comfortable right out of the gate when he got the job. Here's Duke Ellis. Well, Augie had that way about him, making anyone in the room feel like they were the most important person in the room. Absolutely. He was, uh, and again, I, I, I enjoyed uh, the times when I was in the locker room and he was talking to the boys, really giving him a life lesson. I think, you know, I, I, you know, I saw him when he was more fired up and uh, uh, emotional early in his coaching career. My boys got him towards the tail end, but still got great life lessons from Augie Garrido. Sharply hit up the middle past Shoemake, and Ellis has his first knock of the game. Two on with two out here in the fourth. You said that Texas helped prepare you for your big league career. How did it do so? How did going from San Jack to here on to your professional career help. Well, you brought up a great point. I played for Wayne Graham at San Jacinto, yeah. so I played for yeah. another great baseball man, but a better teacher of the game. And and my high school coach was the same way. You know, my father passed away when I was young, so these three men, you know, taught me a lot about life, not only just baseball, but here at Texas, it taught you how to win. So I took that to Boston with me for sure. Watch your boy here. Here we go. I got when he hit the bomb. I got all, all my major league buddies are blowing my phone up. Yeah. Said, "Yep, yeah, we. Just, you got another kid that hits like your your uh, your your better half." <laughs> I, go, I appreciate it, guys. <laughs> and I said, "You're right, because she swings at the high fastball." <laughs> she got a nice snapshot of his three-run home run in the first. How has he changed the most? from an offensive standpoint over the last few years what makes him scary is he will hunt pitches sometimes yeah. like um, like a 2 0 fastball like, he was hunting in the first inning like a Manny Romero you know playing with Alex Rodriguez these guys will sit sometimes on pitches but he'll he'll take that from at bat to at bat depending on what he's trying to figure out you know usually what the pitching coach calling the kid still has to execute back to second and back in plenty of time is we, David Hammond. we talk about all the time that the pitching coach is calling the game basically and it doesn't matter what kind of you know number one number two a big you know a, a big right handed pitcher whatever it is he still has to ex execute those yeah. pitches. I'll tell you what's impressed me the most about him this year is the way he's handled left handers and the way he stayed on him he's hit he's hit some big home runs against left handers all year. Yeah his hands have been in really good yeah. a real good spot to fire and stay back. Three run home run in the first went down swinging at a high fastball in the third. All right dad we're, we're not putting a three one take on here are we. No, but he, <laughs> you know, I, I I don't even when he's swinging like I don't even look at him at night. Yeah. I just say, hey, how you doing? How you feeling? Do you want to go get something to eat? There's no telling what he might be if he's sitting on something right now. Takes for ball four, and then loads the bases. That's what kind of year he's had. Normally, you would try and over, you know, try and do something too much, and you're patient right there, and and uh, turn it over to Zach. I was telling people too earlier with with Nolan, you know, being a little bit under the weather in a big game, that actually might help somebody that you. So he's not too fired up. And it upsets sinker and too. It, exactly yeah. right, a hundred percent. That's what everybody was asking me up here when I came up here to visit with you guys. And I said, actually, it'll help. But also, when David Hamilton kicked that double play ball, something we preached all the time, and I was preached to when I was young. I had a pitching coach named Bill Fisher who got to work with Seaver and different guys like that. 
is that you're good enough to get four outs. When you play at a program like this, or you guys, you guys see a lot of because of the coverage that you do in college baseball for us, you see a lot of big arms, a lot of a lot of a lot of great players that are going to draft next week. And those are the guys right away that they're good enough to get four outs. Yeah. When did you learn to manage your emotions on the mound? Uh, never really. I mean, I, I I tried to stay fired up. Um, you know, when somebody like Yogi Bear, when I played golf with Yogi at the Bob Hope tournament, and Yogi said, "Kid, you could have pitched in our air," or I got the luxury of talking to a drop Don Drysdale when he had his radio show, and you know, I, I just tried to soak it in, man. I obviously watched Nolan when uh, I was young. And then I had the opportunity to pitch against uh, 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 with Tom Seaver. He was my teammate in Boston for a short period of time. And to watch Seaver at his age sit out there and sit at about 88, 89. Then he got second, third, one out. And next thing you know, 93, 93. I was like, okay. Still got it. Yeah. So, and that's the, you know, I was a power pitcher. I wasn't a power thrower. Big difference. Bases loaded for Zach Zubia. This kid's a power hitter. Yeah, he's got some. He's got some pop. Great kid too. I mean, he's he's a giant of a man, but he's such a such a great kid. See Hamilton still home last night. Were you here when that happened? I was. Yeah. I mean, he's just and when he's swinging it a little bit like he's doing, he got some speed up top. It's just. It's been fun watching these kids come together a little bit for Coach Pierce and his staff. Mitchell Kilkenny trying to get out of trouble here with the bases loaded and two down. What would you say to Kilkenny in this situation, Aggie pitcher, in terms of trying to get out of this? No, I, again, I would. You you have to know by now it's the fourth inning how far you can go off the plate once you get ahead. And he has to quit spinning his breaking ball in the middle. You're speeding up some bats, these metal bats, and you're spinning. So he's got to keep his hat pulled down too, because I guarantee you that sun is right in his eyes when he gets ready to deliver the ball. And it's not a good feeling as a pitcher. And you probably pitched in sunlight before where it hits you, and you, I, you know, you lose sight of the yeah. hitter, yeah. Uh, or, or the baseball, or you know, home plate area where you can't pick a ball coming back at you. I mean. Let's face it, you're at about 54 feet when you let this go on one leg. Been out there for a while, his 29th pitch of the inning. Drops it in for a strike. Now it's a breaking ball that froze him inside. You know, a lot of guys don't use that a lot in college because it's it's a dangerous pitch, but freezes a hitter. It's amazing though. That that backup breaking ball, if it's if it's on the inside corner, even inside. I mean, if a guy gets to it, he's usually gonna hook a foul. Man, I loved it. My second half of my career, I, I, everybody thought I was throwing a cutter. You threw it intentionally in there. Yeah, I like it. Everybody thought I was throwing a cutter, like I was talking to Rivera or something, and it was just my tight slider, or I had a little loopier one, a more of a slurve, and I would start that at some of these guys in the major league to stand right on top of home plate. I'll stop at it. See, he wants this away, and it just hangs enough. You know, our angle is a little bit off. You'd have to swing the TV over a little bit. Inside with the fast. Well, you mentioned the shadows being an advantage for the pitcher, even though the sunlight's in his eyes. Did you like to throw your fastball more in that situation when you know you had I, that advantage? I always worked off my fastball, even when I got to the Yankees and when I had a staff that was primarily first pitch breaking ball, the like of David Wells and David Cohn. Hit him. Man. Fastball got away. A run is forced in, and the Longhorns now lead five to one. You know, again, I don't know where the catcher is setting. Let's look at the replay if we have it. But if he's setting, if he was sitting inside, I mean, that's a tough call for this kid to try and make that pitch. Yeah, he was. We got Roger call for replays now. Yeah, he's running I show. About that. Dial it up. Tell him what look Let's you want, go. too. <laughs> so right there, it looked like a two-seamer, and that's a pitch yeah. that you want to ride in there. You don't want that ball running in off the plate, or that's going to happen. So, again, you got to know your pitcher. You got to know the situation you want to throw. You want to call pitches to what he's feeling extremely comfortable throwing right now. This is Mason Hibbler with the bases loaded. So for your viewers out there and your young guys, again, I love TV. I love it when you guys do this because you can see that his left shoulder is flying. And when it flies, you kids know as you get a little bit tired and that left yep. shoulder starts flying, that's your steering wheel. You want that to be your quiet side, your back side to be your power side. 
It's amazing sometimes that the game speeds up and you can see it on the mound and that's when Kilkenny's tried to do a little bit too much. Foot shoulder goes. Yep. Because the fastball's real when it's all working together. Again, that was where I was pretty fortunate to have some really good pitching coaches. They would whistle and just tap their shoulder from the dugout and I knew exactly how to put it back into play in two pitches. When did you start because that's not an easy step. I mean when you get to the point where you can make a one pitch two pitch adjustment in the middle of the game. When did you figure that out. I, again I was lucky man. I, I, I had uh, I had it together pretty early and uh, no one really even come out of Texas all the way through the big leagues mess with my mechanics too much. I enjoyed going over my head because it promoted me to drop my chin down okay. and to have that nice lane to throw to. But I also looked down and paused to gather myself when I was just keeping my hands out front as a pitcher. Here's the 2 1. Out of play. I never heard that. So yeah, you, like, so you like taking your hands over your head because it forced your chin so down. Was it just easier to go downhill then? So when you saw somebody like Seaver or Ryan go over their head, when yeah. you went over your head, it promotes bringing yeah. your chin down. It's like you think maybe like being in a bowling alley or shooting a rifle, you're yep. going right down that lane all the time. You don't see as much of that anymore. Mm -hmm. You got to be careful with the kids in the mitt lookers. Mitt lookers, you know, stare at the mitt the whole time. Yeah, yeah. you'll see it right here. He, he looks down. He, when his hands are in front of him, but he pauses and does look down. So you're kind of your eyes are in the dirt on the pitching mound, but you're really what you want to teach the kid is to focus on where he's going, where his catcher is going to be. He'll 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 look down just for a second where he sets himself. Right there, good move. A little half swing for Hibbler. Yeah, it's a great little it's a great little way to set yourself when you look down. His chin is right there. And when he throws his four seamer, it's staying on plane. Yep. The other one's running all over the map. And he's had to work hard, man. He didn't throw the cutters much tonight either. That's one of the biggest things that he's really grown on over the course of the year. That one he just hadn't found a feel for. This is his 38th pitch of the inning from right-hander Mitchell Kilkenny. There's a four seam. Shallow left, Foster in, Shoemake back, and the shortstop makes a hopping catch for the final out. Thanks for coming by, man. That yeah, was guys, a lot of fun. It. Congrats on all the success, Cody, Cody with a three run home run. Thanks for all y'all do for college baseball. Yeah, it's our yeah. pleasure. Cy Young Award winner Roger Clemens will go back to being a dad for the rest of this one. Adnan Burke back in our college baseball studio. St. Louis facing Ole Miss. Ole Miss leading at 3 2 bottom of the second in the Oxford Regional opening round. That's Jacob Adams. Ripping that ball down the right field line. It's now 6 to 2. That made a 4 2 bottom of the third. Also, Clemson and Vanderbilt. Drew Wharton. 1 0 top the first. Clemson extends their lead to 2 0. Thanks to Wharton's RBI single. Great step from the rock with Tom and Kyle. Keeping that chin down, guys. Like it. Like it, Adnan. This is the NCAA Baseball Regionals presented by Capital One. That's how I'm going to go through life from now on. Just keep the chin down. I like what that means. <laughs> you know you're getting it. Hey, that was fun, though. I mean, I learned. That was fun. No offense, my friend, but I learned more from the Rocket in a half inning yeah. about things that he did. The guy won seven Cy Youngs that you don't really think of. What a great teacher. So here was one of the great things about, about playing professional baseball and, and getting a chance to play a little bit in the big leagues is to have conversations like that when you're sitting on the bench and to see the game through some of the best that have ever played it to see it through their eyes. Um, that was fun. Played for Wayne Graham at San Jacinto Junior College before coming to Texas in 1982. Wayne Graham took Rice to 23 consecutive NCAA tournaments. Chris Andritzos pushes this one into right center. And is out of a job now. Rice currently looking for a head coach. So Wayne Graham, who's a Texas graduate, came to the game last night wearing Texas gear. He said he fan just wanted that. to come and watch a game as a fan for the first time. And to put in perspective how long Wayne Graham has been around the game, the man played in the big leagues for Casey Stengel. Here's Logan Foster. Lead off man on.
Foster is a sophomore from Lincoln, Nebraska. He's a big Cornhusker fan. He grew up, he's known the Childers family forever. He grew up with Rob Childers' daughter, Hannah, who was just a year older than him. He said, I remember going to the Childers' household for one of her early birthday parties. I was the only boy there. Logan first attended the College World Series as a four-year-old. Bob Childers likes that Nebraska connection. Three guys on this roster. Hellman hits two hole. Foster hits five hole. Nolan Hoffman's his closer. All have been a big part of AM's run to this point. Three pitches for Foster. Fourth strikeout for Kingham. He's really pulling off it tonight. And when Foster stays in the middle of the field, it's it's real juice. He can hit it out to any part of the ballpark. But I mean, this is a fastball that ends up right down the middle. And watch the bat path. Logan Foster's just a little bit behind it. That front shoulder's pulling off of it. The, the swing just doesn't look very comfortable right now. Be careful making that same pitch to this guy. Freshman Will Frizzell takes it the opposite way. Got jammed and it turns into a one out hit. This kid is so strong that he can hit the ball literally from foul pole to foul pole can hit it out. We saw him short hop to left field fence yesterday. Will Frizzell has been really good against right handers this year and seems to be getting more and more comfortable. It's an inning where you just feel like AM has to have some kind of an answer back. Alante Wingate had a great plate appearance his first time up. Worked a walk against Nolan Kingham. He was the first Aggie to reach base. Off of an 0-2 count. This is game number 61 for Texas A&M this season. And Alante Wingate is a great example of a player that stuck it through throughout the course of the entire season. Playing time was hard to come by early in the season for Wingate. Then he settled into a rhythm. He found more and more ABs, more time in the outfield, a little bit of time at third. And now he's starting just about every day. It's a long season. There are playing yeah. opportunities that will come about. Yeah, and it's, I mean, when you're 18 to 22 years old, heck, you're any age. Sometimes it's hard to convince yourself just to keep banging away. I'm going to get a chance. I'm going to get a chance. Wingate has made the most of his chance. Two on in front of him. And Dritzis at second. Frizzell at first. This one's lying the other way. One of the things you were looking for out of Nolan Kingham early was how deep he could go into this game. Coming off of an illness, battled a virus early in the year. Had his side work limited uh, early in the week, I should say, and had his side work limited. Not only that, but heat index well into the low 100s. Yeah. How has he looked to you? Uh, he's looked good. He's looked very good. It's, I mean, to me, the key is everything off of the fastball. Does the fastball have that good sink and movement that he had before? Rocket was talking about when he was up here. Chance for two. Clemens to Hamilton to first. It's high. Yes, Got sir. the foot back down. Well done, Jake McKenzie, right there. Because if he didn't come straight down on first base, Wingate's going to beat this one out. Aggies get two hits but can't do anything with it. They lead the Big 12 in double plays. Hamilton with the turn, McKenzie with the handle. Longhorns up 5-1. Texas head coach David Pierce joins us now from the Longhorn dugout Big 12 coach of the year. This is a big game obviously for the postseason but also a rival. What did you tell your guys about handling their emotions tonight. Oh well, that's it. I mean just they've been so good at just playing the game pitch at a time and playing the game really um, to it to its entirety no matter how it starts no matter how it ends and we, we were pretty calm and just say hey, let's go out there and play just like you've been doing and so not a whole lot really. Nola King has missed some condition this week had a virus and knocked him out for a few days. So when you have a situation like that how do you manage him differently today than you otherwise would. Well we just keep an eye on him and kind of continue to watch what the ball's doing. He's been very efficient so far so uh, just kind of paying attention to him in the dugout and making sure that he's got plenty of fluids but 
He wouldn't let me take the ball from him right now. I promise you. Yeah. Done surprises. Coach, thanks for your time. We appreciate okay, it. Okay. Thanks. David Pierce, in his second season as the head coach at the University of Texas. The Aggies have changed pitchers. Mitchell Kilkenny has done after four innings. He faced eight batters in that fourth and threw a total of 90 pitches in the game. Dustin Signs comes out of the AM bullpen, the freshman from Corpus Christi, into the biggest environment he's thrown in. First pitch swinging is a grounder to Michael Hellman. One down, Ryan Reynolds remains hitless. AM coaching staff will rave about the upside of Dustin Signs, a left hander that's filled a few different roles this year, but ultimately could push into the starting rotation before his time in College Station is done. Fastball can get into the low 90s. Breaking ball that he can throw a few different ways, can flatten it out, could add depth to it, but that curveball is something he really lives off of. So does DJ Petrinsky. He crushed one to start the fourth. That was Petrinsky's eighth home run of the season. Catcher from Magnolia, Texas, by way of Hill Junior College, originally committed to Alabama. They had a coaching change. He was available. Texas was in need of a catcher. It's been a perfect fit. Been a great fit. The bat's really coming alive, too. Petrinsky, a home run in each of the first two games in this regional. Bedford thought that was strike three. Bedford didn't help there. Um, there's a few of these balls that are down the zone. The Bedford's kind of taking even further out of the zone. It could be a borderline strike on the bottom part. That's the one that Bedford really needs to, to stick. Hold it right at the bottom part. Don't pull it any further away. Oh, right. right back up the middle. Signs trying to chase it down. Has no play. That'll bring Rob Childress. And the Aggie trainer out of the Texas A&M dugout. Well, Braden Shoemaker is laughing. So is George Yancha. I guess it's good news. Yeah, he must be all right. He's got them all smiling. They hit him right on the throwing shoulder. Watch the release. Kind of goes all the way around. Tries to get that glove up, but that one looked like it hit it square on the left shoulder. We talked about this yesterday when you get hit by a line drive. There's adrenaline that takes over for a minute, and there's reality that sets in a little bit longer. You got to be careful of the reality on this one because, at least on that look, it looked like it got him square on the throwing shoulder. Casey Meyer is the head baseball athletic trainer. He's out there with him. It looks like he was the one that convinced him to take a couple warm up tosses. Got him twice. He got him on the inside of the right arm and on the inside of the left arm. But two or three warm-up pitches. Dustin Signs don't want to come out of this one. So Petrinsky aboard and now Tate Shaw. This is only the 11th appearance of the season for Signs. He's made a couple of starts for Texas A&M this year. And down 5 1. This is a very talented and full Texas AM bullpen. Yep. Why go to signs here? I think it's kind of a tweener spot if you're Rob Childress right now because you don't want to roll your best guys out there quite yet. If it's a one run ball game, you look at it differently. It's a four run ball game. You got to take a chance. The reality is, signs' stuff is plenty good to get you through three or four innings. I mean, this is this is going to be weekend stuff in the SEC here over the next couple of years. It's just not quite there yet. But if he can find it for an hour, you can save the balance of this bullpen. See if your offense comes alive, then manage the back end of this game a little bit differently. Last time out, 
May 19th signs through three innings against South Carolina it lasted 40 pitches. Texas A&M with the best pitching staff in the SEC according to ERA and they pitched like it in the SEC tournament. Tate Shaw 0 for 2 with a couple of strikeouts. Behind the plate, Bedford gives it a look to the netting off the screen. Number 10 national seed Clemson in a dogfight tonight at their home park with Vanderbilt. It's a 3 to 1 Clemson lead in the bottom of the second. Winner of that one matches up with the winner from the Tallahassee Regional. That will not be Florida State. The Seminoles, 2 and Q, eliminated in walk off fashion by Mississippi State today. Breaking ball pulled to right. Patrinsky around second to third. Wingate went to his knees. And it's a double into the corner for Tate Shaw. But Tate Shaw keeps that front shoulder in on this left on left break of ball. Gets new life on a foul ball straight back because if it's a foot or two closer to the playing field, Bedford makes the play and that's it. But instead gets a break of ball. It's not a bad spot. I mean, it's down in the zone. It's moving away from him. But. Shaw stays right on it, hooks it down the right field line. If you've been watching a lot of college baseball this weekend, it looks eerily similar to Stanford's walk-off winner early in the morning last night. Uh, yeah. Stanford in the 13th, two out double down the right field line, scored a base runner from first. That was a dog fight with Wright State. Here's Jake McKenzie. Singled his first time up, grounded out to short last time. Infield in for Texas A&M, down four. And he does his job deep to center field. The Loach behind the logo will load up, fire to third. Sack fly, Jake McKenzie, six one Longhorns. Mentioned the Clemson Vandy game. Ethan Paul just home run, homered for Vandy to tie it at three in the second. Here, the winner will go to the regional final tomorrow night, 9 o'clock Eastern. The loser will match up with the Hoosiers of Indiana, 3 o'clock Eastern. To try and stay alive. That one to the backstop. Shaw to third. That one on the board. Good base running has paid off. A wild pitch charge to signs. Now David Hamilton. Looking at a 1 1 count. Hamilton, second team all conference shortstop. Has incredible speed while at San Marcos High School. He was their quarterback. Averaged better than 200 yards rushing a game as a QB. Three and one. Last year, he was named the inaugural Spike Owen Defensive Player of the Year. You heard Roger Clemens talk about Spike's importance to this program. Right side, through. Hamilton's third hit drives home a run. He's doing it all right now. David Hamilton is doing it all at the top of this lineup. And given this environment where Texas is at right now, it would not shock me if he's off and running on the first pitch.
30 stolen bases for Hamilton on the year. He stole home last night. Bottom third of the order for Texas is four for eight with three runs scored and a couple driven in tonight. In a game and a half, Texas has outscored its opponent here in the Austin Regional 17 to 1. Bedford helped him that time. Full count with two down. We'll get Rob Childress's thoughts shortly. Runner goes, throw behind him, throws away. And Dritzis couldn't squeeze it. Hamilton thinks about third. Is he looking into the sun on that throw? Uh, I, I don't know, but I would tell you, if you're Hamilton, it's the absolute perfect time to go. So, Sines is a guy that lifts and reads, and it takes him a long time to go to home plate. So, in a case like this, if you're Hamilton on an 0-2 count, that's when you take a chance. Duke Ellis is already in a hole left on left. It's not a comfortable position to be at the plate. If they throw you out, so what? But it takes so long for this throw to get to first that even if it's handled by Andritsis, it has to be a perfect throw to second to get Hamilton out with that speed. You guess, you put your head down, you go on that one. Strike three called, a stolen base and non factor here in the fifth. Middle of the fifth, Aggies trail by six. We'll get the thoughts of their head coach, Rob Childress, after this. This is A&M head coach Rob Childress joins us now. Coach, what did you say, if anything, to your team about keeping their emotions in check in this environment tonight? Well, we've played this this game before. It's obviously a little bit different stakes with it being a region. Just play the game. Don't play the event. The event's for the fans. It's about us going out and playing the game. And, you know, for us, it couldn't have started any worse. I thought Mitch was a little bit revved up and, you know, tried to make two final pitches of the first two hitters. And then just like that, Clements comes up, we hang a slider, and it's, we're chasing three runs. What did you see from Kilkenny? I mean, obviously we saw what happened right at the beginning, but then moving forward, do you feel like the environment got him a little? No, I felt like he battled that from that point on. We, yeah. you know, we get to the fourth inning, and, and they stripped him down a little bit just from the number of pitches they took from him. But, again, he was able to keep it at two and, and kept Zubia from getting the big hits, put it out of reach. But uh, all in all, he battled. His slider wasn't very good. And, you yeah. know, those both home runs that were hit, that, that's my fault. to call those pitches. And, you know, such is the game. You go to signs out of the bullpen to back up Kilkenny. What's the both short term and long range plan for the rest of this weekend when it comes to the pen? Well, we've just got to mix and match and do our very best from an offensive standpoint to try to get back in the game tonight. Coach, thanks for your time. We Thank appreciate you, it. Thanks, guys. Head coach Rob Childress. Swing and a miss and the throw down to first to finish it up. I, I thought that was a great point. The, the pitching is one thing, but if they don't get the bats going, the pitching is almost irrelevant. So the bullpen right. decisions primarily are based upon what you can do offensively for the time being. Without a doubt. Yeah, I mean, if, if you get back into it, I think you look at it differently. The the one good thing that you have with signs, and I know that he hasn't thrown a ton this year, but just the pure stuff, the stuff is plenty to carry you for a while if you want to roll the dice that way. Yancha into right center field. Diving grab made by Ellis. Somehow he held on to it.
Great weather for a snow cone. It's always great weather for a snow cone. Watch the two breaks. Shaw in center, Ellis in right. Two very different breaks because most of the time this ball is going to be Tate Shaw's to catch if he breaks in immediately on the swing. Duke Ellis read it perfectly and he had to go a little bit further but that initial first step towards it instead of the, the step that Shaw took back was the difference right there. Zach Deloach takes a pitch for the first time. He is 0 for 2, couple of ground outs. Over in the Conway, South Carolina Regional, Washington is the first team to reach a regional final. Huskies have never won one. This is the fifth time they've been a win away from advancing, the last being in 2002. Pac-12 now 5-0 in regionals this year. We all knew that the pack had two elite teams in Oregon State and Stanford. Yeah. And Washington's late run is starting to pay off. Well, you got to remember, I mean, Washington went to the last game of the season in the pack with a chance to win it. If they beat Stanford on the last day of the year, A, they would have swept Stanford, but B, they, they would have outright won the league. Three balls in a strike to Deloach. Into left. Mason Hibbler pushed back. And he makes the catch at the track. We head to the sixth, where Cody Clemens will lead the inning off for Texas. A three-run home run to his name already today. Mom and dad in the ballpark. Son of a legend living up to the name tonight. It's a seven to one lead for Texas, the number 13 national seed. Hosting a regional for the first time since 2011. And Cody Clemens got him off to a great start with a three run home run in the first. Seven Cy Youngs for the Rocket. Twenty home runs on this season for Cody. The year-by-year -year improvement is remarkable. It mirrors what his brother Casey did year after year in a Texas uniform. And he sends this one high and deep to right field. Did he do it again? He did. Second jack of the night for Cody Clemens. <laughs> High fives for mom. Dad proud too. Yeah, you can clap for that one, Pops. We talked about it when Rocket was up here, and, and one of the things that has impressed me the most about this kid this year is his ability to handle left-handed pitching and do that. That's the eighth home run Cody Clemens has hit against left-handers this year, and he's faced a lot more righties than he has lefties, but the ability to stay on that pitch, drive it with authority, it's one of the many reasons why he's turned himself into a legitimate major league prospect. The kid's got a great chance playing the big leagues for a while. No one with Clemens as a last name is a wallflower. And Cody has delivered a message in more ways than one tonight. A three run home run in the first, a solo shot here in the sixth. And just in case the Aggies didn't know, a friendly reminder as he came around third for the second time, a peek into the Aggies' dugout. Ordinary eggs. 
handshakes and high fives. Dad never hit a home run in the big leagues, but Cody's looking like a big leaguer today, isn't he? Yeah, he's looked apart the whole year. 21 home runs, now second most in Texas history behind only Kyle Russell, who hit 28 and 07. And the Aggies go deeper into the bullpen. Sophomore right hander Landon Miner. Only the eighth appearance of this season for Minor, and it's obvious that Texas A&M is looking forward to tomorrow and the rest of this tournament. And they have to. I mean, the, the reality, when you look at the biggest difference between these two clubs, Texas A&M's a lot deeper on the mound. And we saw that in Hoover, Tom. I mean, what they did the first three days, Kayla Chafin was great in the starting role. Asa Lacey was great in the starting role. And then John Doc Zakis was so good. They still have Chafin, they still have Lacey, and they still have plenty of bullets. And at this point, if you're Rob Childers, you have to look forward to tomorrow because assuming the score holds, AM's going to have to win back to back to back games to get out of this region. Swing and a miss for Zach Zubia. We'll have game two of the NBA Finals for you Sunday on ABC. LeBron and the Cavs look to rebound from a heartbreaking game one loss to Kevin Durant and the Warriors. Our coverage starts with NBA Countdown at 7.30 Eastern from Oracle, also streaming live on the ESPN app. So we always get the LeBron-MJ comparisons. I wonder how MJ would have handled practice the day after what J.R. Smith did. He, I don't know. <laughs> if J.R. Smith was on those Bulls teams, he may not have shown up to practice. That's that's where food poisoning shows up. <laughs> In for a strike to Mason Hibbler. By the way, we're just a couple days away from the Major League Draft. Detroit Tigers have the number one overall pick. They tied the Giants for the worst record in baseball last year. The tiebreaker was the record the year before. So thanks to that, Detroit has the number one overall selection. It is assumed that they will take Casey Mize with that pick. Last year they took Florida's ace and College World Series hero, Alex Fiedo. Mize has a couple of perfect innings on the mound for Auburn tonight. They're playing Army in Raleigh. Two down, which gets you back to the studio. Hey, Adnan. Hello, Tom. An update on Clemson and Vanderbilt. 3 1 for the Tigers in the bottom of the second, but Ethan Paul going opposite field with a smooth stroke goes about 312 feet for the two run home run. That's his ninth of the season. 3 all right now in the top of the third. Back to you and Kyle. A little deja vu all over again in Clemson because yeah. that same regional last year had the same top three teams. Vandy and St. John's were visiting teams, and Tim Corbin's squad got out of Clemson with a regional win. And the Ray Tanner admitted afterwards that maybe it was an oversight in the committee that they just hadn't really noticed. Vanderbilt came out of that one last year. St. John's stayed alive earlier today. Ed Blank Myers Club will meet the loser of that game in the early game at Clemson tomorrow. Ray Tanner, the South Carolina athletic director, two time national champion head coach, is the chair of the selection committee. They caught a little bit of flack this year for passing over Kentucky. Wildcats had a great RPI, but were left on the outside looking in. And Washington, with the highest RPI, is already playing for a regional final. So that certainly backs up the committee if you want to look yeah, at absolutely. it from that view. Well, and I would tell you this I, I don't. I don't know that you could find someone in administration right now that the college baseball world would be more comfortable as the chairman of the selection committee than Ray Tan. I mean, a guy that, that won two national titles in South Carolina, now a sitting athletic director, but has such a passion for this game. And yeah, of course. I mean, there's always going to be things that some people are going to disagree with. I disagreed with some of it. But ultimately, you know that, that the intent is always in the right place because he cares about this game so much. Here's DJ Petrinsky having a monster regional just like everyone else in the bottom third of the Longhorn batting order. Texas seven through nine hitters are hitting 529 with a couple of home runs nine scored and six driven in.
Winner of this one plays for a regional title tomorrow night. The loser goes into an elimination game tomorrow afternoon against Indiana. Hoosiers finished fifth in the Big Ten. They knocked off Texas Southern early today. Four pitch walk will put Petrinsky aboard. For more coverage of the Division I baseball regionals and interactive brackets, go to NCAA.com. Two on with two out here. What's your biggest headline so far this tournament? Florida State getting bounced. Uh, national seed getting bounced. I mean, were they the first team knocked out? If not, I mean, well, were. Texas Southern, there are a couple that went final. Okay, so, so there were the, the rain delay, they would have been the first. Yeah. Yeah. It, uh, to me, that's the biggest headline so far. Mike Martin overtook Augie Garrido this year as the win winningest coach in college baseball history. They would have been sentimental favorites to win his first national championships had they made it to Omaha, just like last year. Instead, they only last two games. Tate Shaw at the plate. to Shaw doubled and scored in the fifth Josh Anthony just homered for Auburn they lead Army 2 nothing in the fifth inning with Casey Myers on the mound Myers four innings one hit allowed four strikeouts so far is Casey Myers big league ready right now he's as close as I've seen we saw him against LSU a few weeks ago. His first four innings, it was it looked like a major leaguer was out there. He got a little bit tired. LSU got to him. Ultimately, it was a big win for LSU. But when it's right, this is better than anybody else. The Detroit Tigers visited Auburn earlier this season to sit down with Casey Mize, who showed up to the meeting, which is essentially a high-powered job interview without his parents, without an agent, without any representation, and he sat and answered their questions time after time again, and the Tigers left by all indications just blown away by his maturity. And not just a great pitcher, also a kid who seems to have it all together. Yeah, Butch Thompson raves about that. The stuff is self-explanatory when you watch it, but he just raves about how he's turned into a leader. He's taking Tanner Burns, a right-handed freshman, under his wing, starting to teach some things that he's seen and, and learned from others. Pay off to Shaw. And that's inside. Longhorns have loaded the bases again. Here's a peek at the headlines. Eight sites have experienced weather delays. Shocker. Elijah McNamee had the three-run rock-off home run for Mississippi State to knock off the number seven national seed and send the Seminoles back to their apartments. UNC Wilmington had an extra inning win against Ohio State. Four to three, the final there. Seahawks might get the uni of the day, too. Pull over, no buttons. I'm with you. But nothing to this point, nothing beats Indiana's, Indiana's candy stripe Reed. BP shorts. I don't think anything can beat it. I mean, it doesn't matter what happens over the next few days. Candy Stripe BP shorts, that's that's one nothing Hoosiers. Jake McKenzie into right field. Alante Wingate. Longhorns leave the bases loaded, but they are in control thanks to Cody Clemens. Cody Clemens going to school today. Three run home run in the first. That got this place rocking, and he didn't stop there to lead off the six, a solo home run. That'll get you an A. You're watching the NCAA Baseball Regionals presented by Capital One. Day number two from the Austin Regional and the Longhorns in the driver's seat. Winner of this one goes to the regional final tomorrow night, 9 Eastern. Indiana awaits the loser in an elimination game tomorrow afternoon. Longhorns grade all of their ABs. 
This doesn't look anything like my report card from back in the day, except for that one letter in Duke Ellis's last AB. Cody Clemens, A F A A. Yeah, it kind of looks like we're going pass fail here. Those are my kind of classes too. That, that tried to find those every quarter. I went through college with a lot of IDKs. I don't know. What was Ellis's first inning AB when he got hit in the shin with a fastball? Longhorns lead eight to one. Here's Michael Hellman. I would bet we've seen eight or nine of those that we just saw right there from Hellman. Foul balls from right handers on two seam fastballs on their hands that they pull down the left field line. That's when you know the late action on Kingham's fastball is pretty good because at the last minute it's getting off the barrel and in on their hands. Line to right. This one into the corner. Chasing it down is Ellis. It goes all the way to the fence. And Hellman standing up at second with a leadoff double. This dude can hit. He could just really hit. So run the two seam fastball in on his hands. Hellman fights that off. And then this one really gives him a chance to go hunting. Fastball over the outside part of the plate. And he's such a complete hitter because if you leave it in or half, he can spin on it. You leave it out or half. He's very comfortable driving the ball the other way. And he does drive it the other way. Hellman's not that big. But the power's a little bit deceiving. Six home runs on the year. That time drives it to the right field corner for a leadoff double. Now Braden Shoemaker at the plate. Hellman hitting 500 this weekend. Will Dalton just homered for Florida. The Gators, the defending national champs, number one all season long and the number one national seed despite struggling late in the season. Kevin O'Sullivan trying to lead his team back to Omaha and back to back national championships. Up the middle, up the bat of Shoemake. Hellman will be stopped at third, ran through it, and he'll come on home. Well, Bolt just pointed to the plate instead of bothering to wave him. Just go Let's that go. way. Just keep running that way. It looked like a stop sign at first, like he was pointing at third. Now I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna point home. Let's go. Like those two swings, if you will, Bolt. Fastball center cut. Shoemaker just stays on it, drives it right back up the middle. Very simple sign at third base. Point run that way. Michael Helmut does score second run of the game for AM. Aggies down six. Bottom of the sixth. Here's Chris Andritzis. Swings at the first. Into right. Ellis coming on. Clemens back. One down. Let's get back to the studio. What's shaking that name?